Hey guys, and welcome back to another video at the MFT Stamps YouTube channel. This is Mindy Egan, and in today's video, I'm going to do some simple watercoloring using the Kareen markers. I went digging through my stamps into something I hadn't used yet, and I found the background stamp, All the Roses. I had purchased this a while ago, and I hadn't used it yet, so I thought this would be a great time to do that. So here I am loading that red rubber stamp into my MISTI tool. I removed the foam insert of my MISTI because this is a red rubber mounted stamp. And I am using the Fabriano Extra White watercolor paper. And I just peeled that out of the block that I have. This is a five by seven sheet. I loaded that paper into my MISTI tool. And then I'm going to prep this with an anti-static powder tool. I am going to heat emboss this image, so I wanna make sure I'm removing any static or fingerprints that might be on it. And then I'm going to ink up my image with a Versamark ink, and I'm gonna stamp this down really well onto my back, onto my cardstock. Uh, watercolor paper has, it's a little difficult to get a really good impression the first time because it's a little bit of a rougher paper. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm putting even coverage all over that and I will stamp it actually about two or three more times. I'm gonna stamp this in that Versamark ink just to make sure that I have that covered everywhere. Then I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder. You could also use clear embossing powder. That would trap the white of the cardstock underneath. So either one would work, but I just wanna make sure I'm getting everything covered with that powder, tapping off any excess. And then I have my heat tool nice and hot so I can bring this to the cardstock and melt that embossing powder. Next, I'm gonna tape this down to a wood board. I wanna make sure my surface stays flat since I'll be adding some water to this. So I'm just taping it down ever so small on the edges. I already knew I was gonna be trimming this down, so I'm not too concerned how far in my tape goes. And then I'm going to bring in my Kareen markers. So I have four markers here picked out. This is 168 Rose Pink, 375 Cerise, I think it's called. Uh, neon violet, which is a purple, and then 045, which is a royal blue. And I have just a craft sheet off on the side here. This is actually off of my glass media mat, and I'm just scribbling that color down. Normally, when I would use my Korean markers, I would go direct to paper. I would color the cardstock and then blend that out with water. This time, I'm using it like I would traditional watercolors. I'm using that as a palette. And I'm going to wet my cardstock just a little bit. I want it just a little damp to help spread that color easier. And then I'm going to wet my paintbrush and pick up that color with my paintbrush. Now, I'll be honest, I had to literally dust off my Korean markers. I hadn't used them for quite a while, so there were some dust on them. And I don't know why I, I haven't been using them. The One of the big reasons I bought them was because of their vibrancy. They just immediately have a beautiful bright color to it. And if you apply another layer of color, it gets even brighter. So here you can see I'm just picking up those colors and laying them down onto that embossed background. And I come in every now and then with a clean paintbrush and kind of spread that around a little bit. I really have no rhyme or reason to why I put color the way where I did. I just meant to spread it out. Then I'm going to just quickly dry this a little bit with my heat tool. I don't want to settle too long in one area because I don't want to remelt that embossing powder. And then I'm coming back in with a fresh palette, same colors, and just adding another layer of that color on top. And you can see that really did brighten it up a lot. Watercoloring like this is also just very therapeutic. So I'm going to set this off on the side to dry for a little while. And I'm going to do some quick die cutting for a sentiment. So I have the word smile here that I'm die cutting from holographic cardstock and also two more times out of white cardstock. And I believe this was 110 pound. And I'm going to layer these together with liquid glue just to create some dimension behind the letters. You could also use foam tape or foam squares to add dimension behind your letters. But I find this to be easier. Then I'm going to check on my panel to see how dry it is. It still needed a little bit of dry time, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the board. So when I'm peeling back the tape, I peel it back kind of onto itself. I don't pull the tape straight up and down, and that helps so I'm not ripping my paper. And then I'm taking my heat tool and just help speeding up that drying process. I'm 
constantly moving my heat gun because I don't want to reheat that embossing powder. And one tip I have for flattening out your cardstock, if it is a little warped, is I take a piece of just copy paper and run that through my die cut machine. That copy paper kind of helps protect my die cutting plates. Then I just have a rectangle die that I like to use to help line up the area and I can pick and choose what area of the cardstock I want to die cut out. So I die cut that out with a rectangle frame. I'm layering together two more pieces of cardstock that is cut to the same size and I'm adding my watercolor panel on top. That adds dimension and complete coverage and I think it also helps keep this flat. I took some just a dot runner adhesive and I placed a little bit on the back of my piece of white cardstock here that's four and a quarter by five and a half and I attached that to my craft mat on my table so that way it doesn't move around and then I can attach my watercolor panel. That adhesive is just helping keep that base in place so I can line this up and have my margins even on each side. Now I think a T-square ruler works really great for helping line up sentiments. Unfortunately, I can't find either one of mine. So I am using this ruler that comes in the Misty Corners set. And I have that just lined up with the edge of my watercolor panel so that it's straight across my card front and I can use that as a guide and then glue down my letters there with some liquid glue. So that's gonna help keep it straight all the way across and I do have that ruler kind of lined up with one of the grid lines on my mat. Now I kept the majority of this card pretty clean and simple so I'm just gonna add a couple of these white jewels, three on top and three on the bottom or underneath my sentiment and I'm just attaching those with an embellishment wand and some liquid glue. And then I'll give you a close up here in just a moment of that watercolor background. I love the colors of this. They're very bright and vibrant and I just love how they work together and create such unique colors. So watercoloring is just definitely a lot of fun. You can create so many different backgrounds and color combinations and very therapeutic. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.